For the first time, Chris Zacco enters a Milwaukee courtroom now charged with killing his girlfriend, Kelly Dwyer, back in 2013. Zacco, already serving time for child porn and drug charges, was transferred from a prison cell to the Milwaukee County courtroom. Prosecutors say he killed Dwyer and then stuffed her in a golf bag before dumping her body in rural Jefferson County. CBS 58's Jacqueline Abad was in court today and joins us live. With Jacqueline, thank you. The search continues for the suspects who robbed a convenience store at gunpoint in Kenosha County. Investigators say two men with their faces covered entered the Northside Superette just before 1030 last night. The store is in the town of Summers, just west of Carthage College, and one of the suspects pulled a gun. Fortunately, no one was injured, but if you know anything about this, please contact the Kenosha County Sheriff's Office. Well, after some morning sprinkles, uh, stubborn clouds have hung around here along with uh, those cool temperatures as well. You mm. make it actually sound a little pleasant, Mike. Well, we try to accentuate <laughs> the positive, don't we? What else can we do, right, Rebecca? President Trump is using Twitter again, this time to attack the investigation into possible Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. The president fired off a series of tweets last night one labeling the quote Russia Trump collusion story a total hoax and a taxpayer funded charade. Another tweet claimed former acting attorney general Sally Yates said nothing but old news during her Senate testimony earlier in the day. Yesterday, Yates confirmed that she had two in-person meetings with the White House counsel. This happened in January, warning the counsel that then National Security Advisor Michael Flynn misled Vice President Pence about his contacts with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. Tonight is a prime opportunity to find out about all the jobs that are up for grabs with the new Bucks Arena project. The team is holding a town hall tonight at the Northwest YMCA on Swan Road in just about an hour. We're talking construction and other trades with details on a residential preference project program for job seekers. You must RSVP at the website there on your screen. There is also a link on our website at CBS58.com. And next on the news at four, an airline pulls the plug on nine scheduled flights at the same airport. And this is what happened. We'll have a full report from Florida just ahead. All too often, our news from around the country has involved trouble on airplanes and in airports. And it happened again last night, an angry eruption of passengers at Fort Lauderdale's airport after Spirit Airlines canceled nine flights. As Memo Borjekes reports, a labor dispute is at the root of it all. Spirit Airlines said this morning it is shocked and saddened to see the video from inside the airport. A murder can well, we've seen this sort of thing before, but it never really gets old. A soldier coming home from deployment, and not everyone knows he's coming. We would always cuddle that night before she goes to bed, watch a little bit of a movie. National Guard Staff Sergeant William Cooper returned to his home in Arkansas after more than a year away from his daughter Myra. She didn't know about his return until her elementary school introduce their mystery reader for the day in the classroom. It's Myra's dad. I knew it. Hi. Hey, Bobby. Hey. Good. Yeah. And that's what a reunion looks like. After 400 days apart, now Myra has a lot of plans for her dad, including vacation, Monopoly games, battleship games, and outside time. <laughs> Welcome home, Staff Sergeant Cooper. One week ago, a fuel spill raised concerns about a feeder creek into the KK River. And as we all make plans to get out and enjoy the great outdoors, it raises familiar concerns about the health and safety of our waterways and our individual roles in protecting them. Cheryl Nen of Milwaukee Riverkeeper is here with an update. Now a week into it, what is your assessment of what happened, how the cleanup was handled uh, with that feeder creek near the airport? Yeah, from what we've heard, um, you know, it was a fairly small um, spill of jet fuel that has been cleaned up or most of it's been cleaned up. Um, and so hopefully they'll be able to, you know, avoid the same problem happening in the future. But apparently it was an unused gate and there was a problem with the valve. But, you know, it's unfortunate because anytime we have a, a release like that into the creek, it's obviously not good for the water quality or the wildlife that are in the creek. Was there any takeaway with the response? that you think was a positive or a negative? Um, I think the response was pretty quick, um, which is good to know. Um, and, you know, we can always improve on that. And I think in general, you know, with infrastructure, whether it's at the airport or, or roads or bridges, I mean, we have, you know, we, we need to probably do a little bit better making sure that we're maintaining what we have and, and staying on top of, of repairs and replacements and things like that. Well, that's really been the mission of Milwaukee Riverkeeper. It's a nonprofit organization. Tell us a little bit about some of your recent efforts. I mean, you organize citizens to get out there and physically pick up trash and clean up the waterways. Yeah, I mean, our mission really is to protect the rivers and improve water quality. And our 
goal is really to get to a point someday where we have clean, fishable, and swimmable rivers. So um, we organize river cleanups. We just had a very successful one on Earth Day, um, which we had over 4,000 people that came out to 57 different parts of the Milwaukee River Basin. Um, and so we really do organize people to get in there and clean it up, connect with the river. Um, we're also promoting an adaptive river program right now, which is essentially just trying to create a more continuous year-round connection with the river. So trying to get churches and businesses, um, scout groups, different people to adopt different sections of the river where they're, you know, regularly keeping their eye out to make sure that the health and quality is good, that we don't have oil spills and other things we need to worry about, but just really helping with, you know, removing trash, maybe removing invasive species, restoring sections of the river. Um, so um, we have more information about that at our website and just looking for more, you know, more people to help us uh, well, clean up the rivers as it's well. It's encouraging to hear about this personal individual assessment, though. But I think the last time you reported on the watershed, you were talking about water quality of a C minus. Yep. That isn't a goal, really. Yeah, no, I mean, we definitely, you know, in some ways we've come a long way because I think, you know, if you look at many cities like Milwaukee, you know, they really built with their backs to the river because the rivers were so polluted at the time and there was raw sewage and dead animals and, you know, all variety of things but I mean we really have dramatically improved water quality you know in the last few decades with sewage treatment with removal of dams um, you know we've gone from like four species of river and in in, or sorry four species of fish in the downtown portion of the Milwaukee River to over like 40 species of fish so we know we're making some really concrete and important improvements you know that said we do have a legacy of historic contamination that we're still dealing with and we still find you know remnants of industrial chemicals we just found some PCBs and kind of the portion of the Milwaukee River just south of Esterbrook Park and so you know we don't we do know we have historical problems we still need to clean up um, we still have problems with a lot of things like road salt, which is a huge pollutant, fertilizers that we're, a lot of us are using on properties and golf courses and farms. You know, there's a lot of, of places where we need to do a lot better to improve water quality, but you know, we're on the way. So you are feeling optimistic as opposed to pessimistic about the future? I am feeling optimistic. You know, we've been able to bring a lot of great funding um, here locally with federal programs like the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative that have really allowed us to clean up, you know, decades of, of legacy, you know, contaminated sediments. We just spent 50 million um, to remove a lot of contamination in the Lincoln Park area. And that was about 70% of the pollution that we know is in the Milwaukee River. So, I mean, that's a huge accomplishment in, in you know, five or six years uh, time. And so, you know, there's a lot of really, you know, really things, good things that we're proud of. We've made some really amazing strides to cleaning up, you know, a lot of problems that we've had for many years. And I know you've got a lot of work ahead of you. So I'm going to let you go to get to it, Cheryl. <laughs> Thanks for and having I've us. I've already posted more information about Milwaukee Riverkeeper, including a link to their website where you can learn about adopting a river at CBS58.com. Thanks again, Thanks. Mike. A strip club on Old World 3rd Street. The city is one step closer to that possibility after Milwaukee Alderman voted 10 to 5 to clear the way for the club. Many asking why on a picturesque tourist laden block. Maybe the fear of lawsuits. CBS 58's Lindsay Branwell joins us live with the latest. Lindsay? Now to a CBS 58 News exclusive. A Milwaukee woman going after a company she says ripped her off and threw her into debt big time. At that time, shares were supposed to be fun and enjoyable, and yet you're ripping people off and lying and tricking and cheating. Diamond Resorts International is at the center of a billion-dollar lawsuit. The company is accused of scheming elderly people into signing up for timeshares. Lisa Atien says the company forged documents to approve her credit and that she never plans to use the timeshare. The only thing she wants now is her money back. Beloit man is charged with breaking into the state capitol in Madison, but that's only part of the story. 27-year-old Zachary Bigelow was charged today with criminal damage to property and entry into a locked building. Uh, according to the criminal complaint, Bigelow said he was in a casino Friday night into Saturday morning, went to downtown Madison for more drinks, entered the capitol and climbed the building. Police found two windows broken, one in the first floor bathroom and one on the fifth floor, and they found blood throughout the building. Later, he got into a car and police were able to track the license plate using surveillance video. 434 right now, a quiet, cool and cloudy afternoon. Rebecca's getting us ready for what's ahead tonight. Rebecca? As we take a look at KS58 News. Now to a celebration of African-American businesses in Milwaukee this morning. They call it the Breakfast of Champions, and it was hosted by the African-American Chamber of Commerce at the Pfister Hotel. It's also a fundraising event recognizing minority business leaders, especially those who have been around a while, laying the foundation for others' success. We're honoring to let the smaller businesses know that um, that there's a, uh, an example uh, to grow larger and to grow stronger. 
Today's breakfast honored Cecilia Gore as its 2017 breakfast champion. She's the head of the Milwaukee Brewers Community Foundation. In fact, I did a profile on her. Look in the local news section. Dot com. What a nice tribute to. Yeah, says it all, huh? It Hope really does. for kids. Very much. Yeah. Mac has been doing that for many, many years. Gotta love it. And next on the news at four, President Obama on tour. We'll show you where he turned up today, and it was a long way from the White House. And the men and women of Milwaukee law enforcement will show great humility tonight when they honor a little boy gone too soon, along with their own rank and file for meritorious service. Kevin Little will posthumously receive the Valorous Conduct Citizen Award. The 10-year-old shielded his two-year-old cousin Tanaje during an arson fire back in October of 2015. His grandmother had safely gotten other children out of the house that night, but Kevin ran back into his cousin's bedroom. We will never know why they couldn't get out, but as MPD puts it, we know he chose to stay rather than abandon his cousin. I have more details on this very special evening ahead on our website right now, cbs58.com. We'll also be honoring uh, Officer Jennifer Hall with the Purple Star Award. As you might recall, Mike, she suffered the concussion and gashes in her head when a concrete block was uh, thrown at her squad car during the Sherman Park unrest. And I know you'll be emceeing the event tonight. What I like about this award ceremony, which I've been to a number of times, is that it brings together Milwaukee's finest with members of the community all uh, in one night. You hit the nail on mm -hmm. the head. All right, don't go anywhere. Your full ready cast with meteorologist Rebecca Schold is straight ahead. Stays rather cloudy this evening, but we've got some 60s ahead. Hey, don't go anywhere. The CBS 58 News at 5 with Bill and Kate is coming up next.